Hello, welcome to the Flow Show. Sarah DiFelice here, and we have Tim Glover here. He's gonna play us a lovely intro. And we're out here in the beautiful nature on Flow Studio Terrace. It's just a lovely day. It is a beautiful day, I tell you. And we've tried camera angles at all <laughs> all ways of imaginable because the sun is so bright. It's bright and hot. Yes. We wanted to feature the beautiful water and we decided, hey, there's a reflection right here behind us that you can <clears throat> hopefully see some of the beautiful water. The water's so healing. I've been spending so much time on the water lately. Tell us about that, uh, Sarah. Well, water, flow. Flow. Bruce Lee said, be, be like water. Be like water. And so I get a lot of inspiration from water and a lot of healing from water. And I got a sup, stand up paddleboard recently uh, to bring joy into my life. And that it has been. It, is it, has it been doing the joy, it, joy thing, bringing it into it, your life? It has. Well, that's a great, I mean, think that's an awesome segue. Today's discussion is about the difference between heart coherence and head coherence and the need as as those of us who are actually uh, consciously navigating this new reality, how important it is to actually start to shift from a reliance on head, which suggests very strongly because of the way we've been taught that we can actually forecast absolutely anything and everything in the future with absolute precision. And the reality with COVID and the reality with this, this economy, this new economy as we, we speak of it, is that you can't. You can't forecast with any degree of certainty whatsoever. So you have to actually trust in something bigger than the head. And in this case, it's the, the heart. heart. And just saying shout out, namaste to Rome. Rome can hear us okay. Our microphone's good, can you hear us. Uh, uh, big heart guy. And the beautiful thing about the heart, and I mean, there's so much science around this heart coherence now as well. The um, electromagnetic field around the heart is like 10 times more powerful than that of the mind. Yeah. So there's, there's that bit as well and this speaks to the whole we've been using this hashtag energy age that I mean we always energy has always been the number one factor that runs our life but we're waking up to the power of this more and more especially as information is bombarding us constantly there's just way too much to keep up at the head level and the good news is that we don't have to a lot of times we say let's just chop off the head Not yes really but Metaphorically speaking, to because you know I where know that, that came from. It came from Joseph Campbell. I didn't know that. Oh, did it? Joseph Campbell is a comparative mythologist, and every time he was actually writing, he's done phenomenal work on comparing different mytho uh, mythological uh, practices from the past. And every time he found himself getting too heady, he he developed this ritual mm -hmm. that I've since used and introduced to you, and we use it all the time, saying, you know, just imagine. A butler coming in. We call him Jeeves. 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 Jeeves comes in with the, with a plate, a tray, and there's nothing on the on the tray. And he comes in, and we cut our heads off, and actually allow Jeeves to leave right. by the far door. And then we conduct whatever discussions we have, or whatever video, or whatever we're actually about, right. more from a heart centric right. place. And that was Joseph Campbell. Beautiful. And it's for me like when I get when I witness myself get really caught up in my head, and. You know, Einstein says, and you quote all the time, you can't solve a problem at the same level that it was created. And so in the mind, we just cycle over these thoughts over and over and over again. And so whenever I catch myself doing that, water for me is like a good way of getting out of my head and into the heart and into the flow of water and being really present in the now. And in that space where my heart is expanded, I get deeper insights. Right, which, which you've introduced me to as being Frequent frequency, so yes. a high frequency, the mind only, uh, the brain, the mind, the ego really running that show, can only, I guess, digest is the best word, mm -hmm. certain concepts. And those concepts are very predictable, provable, and they actually work with the concept in business around efficiency. So they, the whole objective with, uh, with business is to be efficient. And I think as we're moving forward, there's no such thing as efficiency. We're gonna be banging around mm -hmm discovering new worlds and there's all kinds of people on the planet who have already done this kind of thing 
and individuals as well as organizations big and small but they don't tend to get the lion's share of the press because the lion's share of the press has been funded through broadcasts by big big universities and big financial institutions and big government who actually have been very very invested in keeping this old way alive because it's worked very well like we've got we have technology such that I don't really even know this is also uh, just as an aside now is is Sarah's just amazing at pulling this whole thing together like seconds before we go on air so I just sit that's there, me they, trusting the flow yes yeah, so you're trusting the timing <laughs> and the like flow and, and that is navigating through and from the heart whereas yeah. majority of my experience has been historically speaking ahead I've got all kinds of designations and I've worked in business and helped business people navigate by I'm now starting to realize by using head orientations because that's where they were at so I needed to meet them where they're at and I'm starting to to understand that those are those engagements only went so far they got great results but could have actually got you know much bigger results if I was successful in helping them shift from a head coherence or a head navigation to a heart navigation Imagine what we could accomplish if, in fact, we all did what we loved, right. which is part of the whole notion of heart coherence. It is, and this is what we're waking up to. And you know, when there, if there's so much to think about, and there's, there's just when you know you reach a co certain capacity at that level of the head, that just like like science actually shows that the heart is ten times more powerful. So as we wake up and start to honor this fact honor our energy honor that we broadcast our reality from our heart so when we keep our levels high doing what we love and rome says i get that in the woods me too oh yeah rome if i i actually spend quite a bit of time uh at, at flow country studios which yes. is in the woods and sleep in the forest there in my tent and yes yeah, she's a hotel in the back i have yeah. my hotel in the back of flow country studios there's a bee visiting us uh, but when we keep our levels high doing what we love and getting in touch with nature, whatever that is for you, it brings us to our true nature. It opens the heart, it expands the heart. And as so long as we can stay out of the mind and thinking we have to know the future and we can stay with that trust in the unknown because we are totally in the unknown we're, and this is the beautiful gift that COVID has brought to us is to recognize we've always been in the unknown and now it's just more in our face than ever before. And to trust that w when each person does that work of shedding what kept them in those lower frequencies of not doing what they love, and they start to honor doing what they love, we will co-create together a beautiful new reality on this planet. And this is what we are about, and this is what we are anchoring here through Flow Network. Yes, I, I, th I think it's safe to say that I spent a, a lot of years being a professional rescuer. Uh, initially in uh, in family relationships being a res rescuer and then I got that so f phenomenally well worked out the mechanics of that then translated that to business as a professional rescuer and they call those people experts uh, consultants trusted advisors so I've been a consultant for a number of years and in understanding that you can only go so far from from a head standpoint I think it it is safe to say when you step back and you look at the fact that we're on this tiny little round orb or marble that's firing through space at I can't I can't remember what the speed beautiful is beautiful blue and green earth yeah and it's shooting out like it's, it's moving at a really significant rate of speed and it's spinning at the same time and we as a species think we can figure stuff out within that context so we so the infinite context that science has provided us when we look at the fact that we're an earth with within one galaxy which is only a small part of a bigger universe infinite infinite and here we are on planet earth thinking that we can actually control all of the massive amounts of things that are actually coming into play which we're now calling complexity science and we're at, with complexity science we're actually recognizing that the world, the earth, our experience is made up of information and what's what in Dave Einstein they called it information plus matter. And the and along came complexity theory and they decided when they go a little bit further, what really matters all about is the information within matter. So our our whole being, our bodies, these chairs, this universe, the planet, it's it consists of information plus energy vibrating within a bandwidth. And we have as a society focused 
almost exclusively on information. And we believe we're now it's time to actually start to integrate energy into that mix so we have information plus energy. And that is a radical experience. And it's only through crisis like COVID or in my case, working with business people and in our case, working with business people who are looking for this new way of navigating, they actually recognize I've hit a wall. There's gotta be something else because I'm doing everything I can to actually make this happen. What do you suggest? And the very first thing we do is cut your head off. And then the second thing is, is consider that maybe there's more than just information that we need to master with our heads. There's energy that we can actually start to access through our hearts. Mm -hmm. And that's how I believe we're moving forward as a society. And there is, there's gonna be a, a lot of pushback, I think is fair to say, on that way of navigation because there's been so much investment made in the infrastructures that have actually dominated from a top-down basis through, through, I think, thousands and thousands and thousands of years to say, no, 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 we can control this and we can become very efficient. Right. I think there, in the past there was pushback, but I think now you get to that point, like at least some of the, some of the clients that I've worked with, yeah. they, in that crisis, they're just like so much in this surrendered <laughs> space of like, oh my gosh, my head hurts. Like, okay, what? I don't have to think so hard and I don't have to try to consume all this information outside like this is the main message of this big pivot is that everything is inside all the information that we need comes inside of us not from a book I mean books are great I'm, I'm a big reader and I love listening to podcasts and get inspiration from others but ultimately the message is that your power is inside of you information that you need for your navigation forward is inside of you yeah and so the type of coaching that we do is all about empowering because it's not about saying like oh, I know the right way and I think that's what the old you know the legacy leaders come from is like I know the right yeah, way yeah, come on over this here. is the right this is exactly the right way this is the right path and I you know the new leaders rising are the ones who are saying you're the leader you are the leader, yeah. you listen to your heart, you do what you love, and this for me is what flow is all about, and then be able to trust that everyone around us is also you know, in that space, and how can we empower one another and support one another into this, this understanding of everything is inside, and there's been, I know in my past, I've just constantly given my inner authority out to outers and try to fit this is what get, creates yeah. us to have to fit into rules or fit into a certain structure and you know this is uh, this is the coming out and the breaking out of, of everyone and you know we're so so excited to empower the inner leader the inner creative in all of us because we're, we're creating this new earth together we are creating we've always been creating it we just haven't been very conscious of the fact that we're creating it and I think that the, the pivot from information to energy plus information, the, the, the accessible terminology for that is, first off, no one's going to pivot, unfortunately. It seems that statistics would suggest no one pivots without some kind of a crisis prompting them to consider a different way. And the thing that actually is held the highest, in the highest esteem in, in society and business and governments and religion is this notion of truth. And there's an ultimate truth. And the whole idea is, is you scale this hierarchy till you get to the high level up here. And then somehow, magically, at the top of the pyramid, that's when you're actually in touch with truth. And in our society, we give our power away to those who are at this high, high level and say, they know the truth. They must be figuring this thing out. You know, the whole, the, the challenges that, that we've got facing us, somebody has to actually be figuring that out. And so we look historically and we look for who's at the top of the pyramid be they in government or in academia or business and we'll actually count on them to give us the solution well that's not working very well and I think for some people it's still working but I I think that it's safe to say with Me Too movement and Black Lives Matter and then Occupy Wall Street and all those types of I guess people speaking up and saying yeah yeah the old way is not working anymore we need to actually move from a total reliance on there being an ultimate truth to trust yes. and shifting from truth to trust we can actually start to get in touch with the biggest mechanism for navigation which is the heart and heart coherence I mean it, it's funny I had not actually uh, 
ran into this concept of heart coherence when we met, and you've helped me greatly in understanding this. When I when I look at this notion of of it's frequency, frequent frequency, so your high frequency or low frequency. So love is the high frequency, fear is the low frequency. And I just launched a site uh, that maybe actually is live today, timgloverCreative.ca, which is where me featuring uh, my paintings. So I've been a painter for quite some time, and um, and I haven't really. I sold when I was young, but I haven't sold recently until now. So I'm getting back into that and using well, color. Doing what you love and doing then what boom, I love. instantly. Yes, and it's actually Great working feedback. very well. And this image came to me that, that says, if through head coherence, if we're looking at the, the color palette, and the color palette, there's basically black at one end of the spectrum and white at the other, the highest end of the spectrum. And in the middle, there is blue, there's red and yellow. At from head coherence, all you're doing is dancing with black and blue. And then maybe you've got some white to lift you out of the blues. But in with a head coherence, you do not have access to the full spectrum. It's only when you actually move into heart's coherence that you have access to the black at the bottom, blue, red, yellow, and white. And so you have all the magnificent colors of the spectrum from just those five colors. And that's been my experience with the idea of heart coherence. It allows us such a massive range to be able to pull from, but we have to actually work our way up that, that bandwidth range by letting go of density, letting go of fear, letting go of grief, letting go of guilt, shame, all those kinds of stuff. Brene Brown talks about, Oprah Winfrey talks about, Deepak Chopra, Eckhart Tolle. Yeah, letting go of all of those things and all of the relationships or the habits, whatever we've kind of been not so consciously doing in our life that keeps us in those places, like letting go of that as well. And, and I've been in that space and man, what a difference. I mean, from going, you know, doing what I love to then feeling obligation. Yeah. Like I'm obligated to do this and then how that changes. And uh, I, I love that metaphor of the painting and all the colors. Well, and the black and blue is such a great, they've been just getting pounded with black. You're right. just well, black you're, and you're, blue. You're, you're, it's the inside, like some, I've heard some people say we're, the World War Three that we're in right now <laughs> is the war inside of ourselves. Right. Where we're fighting and resisting. Pounding what it is ourselves. And pounding ourselves, making ourselves feel guilty, making our, you know, carrying the shame and all the different things that really prevent us from doing what we love. And I love what Vicky is saying here. I believe we also pivot from moments of great inspiration. Yes. Yes. And that's that's what flow for me is all about. It's like once you're you're at that frequent frequency, you're you're constantly, you know, allowing yourself to do what you love and feel amazing and self loving about what doing what you love. There's literally these beautiful moments of inspiration that seemingly come out of nowhere and the the more you follow those instantly in the moment, the more that flow leads you to yeah. beautiful, magical synchronicities and things that you'll never be able to explain at the level of the head. And, and in fact, there's people, you know, terms out there of like, that's woo woo, or that's, that's this or that and trying to put, you know, that's not relevant. Well, well yes, it, it is. is. <laughs> I, you know, I'm just, I'm, so I, I belong to the Rotman Business School um, publisher so that every time they actually feature someone, and this this is a, a, um, someone called Margaret Hefferman and her new book called Uncharted, How to Navigate the Future. So this is a woman who's published, so it's in the B, so business school, B schools here. Rotman's actually from uh, from a North American stand where they're up in the top 10. And, they, and she's being promoted by Rotman is saying, you know what, we need to actually let go of efficiency. We need, need to basically let go of head-based profound planning and planning and avoiding risk we need to actually dive in and this book called uncharted which is being released in september talks about it as this is the new way of navigating this is the new way forward is to start to use what out what we are calling heart coherence they're not yet using that language specifically but they're talking about the fact that you have to have to start learning to trust and this is the things that are being accomplished by individuals as well as large organizations are off the chart they've always been there mm -hmm. it's just they have not gotten the 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 nod from the, the people on the hierarchy to say that's a good way of going forward and I think we're finally at the stage where there's enough people who are starting to realize that I need to take 
matters into my own hands. Right. We don't start, need nods from we anybody don't no, else. Yeah, we do not need nods from above Say, hey, you know what, you're doing a good job fitting in. Right. I'm going to now promote you to the next level because you fit in. We have a nation of people who are poised to jump and flow. And I think that that is so exciting and it's been a long time coming. I mean, thousands and thousands of years. Yes. And this is the big, the big pivot it's from big pivot. truth to trust, from head to heart. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, and I love when we, we, we love Joe Dispenza because he's yes. been in this game and promoting this type of, you know, when the head and the heart coherence are aligned, we are so powerful, way more powerful than and society in the past has typically led us to believe, but we're all waking up to this power, and it's beautiful. Yes, and the, and the interesting thing with this new orientation, the language is all over the place. The use of terms, there's no, there's no common terminology that, that can be used because it's all getting made up in the moment, and it's all specific to the individual. So we use words like from you know truth to trust and head coherence to heart coherence, Possibly you have different words for that. Mm -hmm. And all of those words and languages and labels and metaphors, if they work for you, keep doing it. Mm -hmm. Yep, as Rome says, balance is key. Yeah. Yes, and that is the balance of bringing the head and the heart into perfect coherence so that we are truly just navigating in this flow in the ever-present now and trusting the unfolding and honoring that we create this reality of ours. And honoring the beautiful gift that it is to live on this beautiful blue and green dot spinning yeah. through space at a good clip. at a good click clip and uh, yeah do you want to play us an outro well, you're gonna, yes I was just looking at time and thinking we're, we're trying to keep we're this more tight we're trying to keep it a little bit more tight we so appreciate you for engaging with us and thanks for the likes and the hearts and you know we love hearing your input and what where you're where you're watching from even if this is from the replay and what's going on in your life what synchronicities are you finding what are your visions what are you co-creating on this earth please feel free to share we appreciate you so much beautiful have a beauty flow rest of your day Yes, flow over and out. Flow over and out. See you next Thursday. Namaste.